Thank you, Sheila. Thank you for the pivot uh, piece to China organizers. It's a it's an honor to back clean up and bring the discussion that all three previous speakers brought up to a up to date uh, present day context. So, the good news about the election is that we no longer have to deal with irrational, uh, arbitrary. Uh, um, xenophobic attitudes and thinking of the Trump administration. That's the good news. Not so good news is the difference between US and China is a bipartisan issue by the both parties. The Democrats criticize and attack China on the basis of human rights, which is really a false premise issue. When you think about, as Professor Lin Xi Wang had mentioned, China has brought up 850 million people out of poverty. They work on all the remote areas to make sure they now can live above subsistence level. That is not an indicator of human rights abuse. Furthermore, the Ash Center of the Harvard Kennedy School has been doing a decade-long survey of the Chinese people's attitude about their government. And it has, the approval reading has increased from 80 some percent to currently at 93 percent approval. Unheard of in our current context in the US. So let's stop the ideological battle and think about on the current present day basis, how do you make both, both sides win? And I just posted an article in the Asia Times that Biden must avoid the lose-lose confrontation with China. So let's look at the positive side of what we Americans get out of it if we collaborate with China. And one of the things we have to understand and accept is as Professor Lin Shi Wang mentioned, China is on the rise. They are the second largest economy. In the certain areas, they are stronger and better than we are. We gotta accept that and then go from there. So, <clears throat> Chinese investments, how can they be, be, be improve a better for us in, in the United States? Well, there is this xenophobic feeling that Chinese investment means they're here to steal from us, which is nonsense, because we all know that foreign investments into America, aside from investing in stocks and bonds, if they're here to invest in manufacturing facilities, it creates jobs. It creates jobs that may not have existed if you were only dependent on American investments because American investments seem to go all to Wall Street. Some examples. Hire has been here for a long, many, many years making appliances. They even took over the General Electric plant uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, Mitch McConnell's state. They saved, I don't know how many, the appliance park of GE would hire tens of thousands of people. They kept their job. China Construction America has been in this country for at least 25 years. They rebuilt the Alexander Hamilton Bridge north of Manhattan. They converted from a four lane highway into an eight lane bridge. It was a $407 million project that the New York State let out. It's the biggest project they ever have given. And guess what? They brought it in within budget ahead of schedule and they, the employees, the workers, and almost all of them are American workers. So what did you get out of it? You got a rebuilt project, infrastructure related, helped by the Chinese that would not have happened or at least much more. There is the, um, the subway coach project. The CRRC, which is a rolling stock rail company from China. They came, they set up two assembly plants, one in Chicago, one outside of Boston. 
to assemble modern Met subway coaches for LA, Chicago, Philadelphia, and Boston. The advantage is that their bids were at least 20% cheaper than the competitive bids, and the competitive bids were not from U.S. producers because the U.S. no longer make the coaches. It has more than 60% local content because all the inside of the coaches were made locally, direct, managed and directed by the Chinese management. It meant 150 jobs at each location, Chicago as well as um, Boston area. And this success, they've been supplying the coaches all along now. The success meant that they were interested in seeing how they could supply the same for New York, one of the oldest subway systems and needs badly replacement, and Washington DC, but then um, US Congress stepped in. Our Senator Leader Schomer of the Democratic Party says, wait a minute, the Chinese could be using the coaches to spy on us. Can you imagine the Chinese listening in on a daily conversation in the subway coach? Hi, Joe, how are you doing? You think the Yankees are going to win this year? That's big, big time intelligence, I tell you. So one of the lessons is that if you can see eye to eye to work together, there's a mutual benefit. Climate change. Both Xi Jinping and President-elect Biden are very much in favor of getting into the climate change because the world needs the two biggest economy to work together on this. This is an easy one. The Chinese actually have made advances in solar and in wind energy. Those companies could easily come in here in the US, build plants here to help the US turned into green energy. Again, those mean jobs locally, even though it's managed by the Chinese. So we have to accept that they can bring certain benefits to the, to the party. So let's look at the one more item. Because of the COVID um, virus, China, because they were able to, willing to pay the bill and control ahead of time, they actually are turning around and they're the only major country, except for maybe Vietnam, have turned their economy around. China is now considered the economic engine to drive the economy globally. That, what does that mean? That means that the US, if they want to get some help in turning the US economy around, they have to work with China. And in what way? Well, one of the obvious ways is that the Chinese are importing about a $2 trillion annual market for imports. And there is room in there for American products, not just the soybeans and, and, and lobsters and other things. There's many more things that the US incoming government can concentrate on, on how to sell to China, how to locate the base in China. The proof, American companies are already there. General Motors, Coca-Cola, you name them. They are making more money in China to cover the losses that they have in the rest of the world. That's another benefit for working together because China's consumer market is the biggest one already and they're growing. So this is how is my piece that I wrote in my in Asia Times is this is how both sides can win. You have to work, and in the game theory, you have to move from the lose lose quadrant, which is the um, southwest quadrant, and move up to the northeast quadrant where both parties can win. That's the current context. We just have to get over the ideological battle that Americans seem to have. Now, it's not going to be an easy job because both parties have worked so hard to position China as the adversary, the enemy, the co-war co uh, uh, rival, 
to the point that the American people are convinced, have a very strong negative feeling about it. So it really is going to be up to the Biden administration to start turning it around. And perhaps when they start turning it around, they don't just automatically say, we're buddies with China. They start turning around by explaining why certain steps along the way is positive and good for the American people. Now, what can we do as Chinese Americans to help rectify the situation? I think the forum that we're having, the webinar that we're having, is in that direction. It's a positive direction. We have to speak up, as Henry said. We need to stand up and explain. Now, I am first generation immigrant. I was 11 when I came over here. And I truly can say I lived the American dream. It was a wonderful 50, 60 years after I've been here. And I like to tell people that I live in the best of two worlds. I'm a proud American, I'm a loyal American, but I'm proud of my Chinese culture and background and upbringing. And I really feel that it's my job to try to explain China to the US and vice versa. What I don't wanna see is to see the two countries that has my affection and my love to go into battle and go into war. That is a truly a lose-lose situation and a lose-lose outcome that we will regret it more than anything else, my grandkids would regret it. So this is what we have to continue to do and strive. Thank you.